Hello everyone, today I'm going to go over how I replicated Vercel's animated tabs from their dashboard. I've been trying to figure this out for a while now, I really like the smoothness of it and how it looks. I finally was able to figure it out after reading an article published by Joshua Wooten. I've linked it in the description if you want to take a look at it. Now let's get to it. So I got my VS Code IDE set up as well as my local host showing. This is what we are going to be building, you can see we got the tabs going. And whenever we hover over them, we have an element that shows up. And these are just some placeholder items I have to make it look more fuller. Now I'm assuming that you have a project that you already want to add these tabs into. So you're going to go ahead and install a couple packages. And those packages are class names and frame or motion. So you're going to go ahead and install those into your project. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go inside your tailwind.config file and in here you're going to add a line of code which is this line right here. So once you have that then you could go ahead and run your project. We're going to do npm run div. Now I have four main files that I'm working with in order to get this working and those files are the page file, the tabs file, the use tabs file, and the framer file. Now each one of these files are in their designated folder. You can have it whatever way you want depending on your file structure. The first place we're going to look at is our page file. Now inside our page file we have our tabs component imported here. So this is where the root of where the tabs is being imported. So the next file we're going to take a look at is our tabs file to see what's in it. Now inside our tabs file there's a couple things that are going on. In the top we're importing a couple more components. The other components that I mentioned that from the files that we're going to take a look at next are right here. We got framer and use tabs. Now these imports are the placeholder items that I have currently of what shows up when you select a specific tab. So these are those. You can see that we have a constant called hook props. So these are the props that we are going to be inputting into our use tabs hook, which we'll see. This is where we create our labels for each one of the tabs, the children, so the things that are, that are showing up when you click on a specific tab. That's all happening right here. Now we've created another constant called framer and we are assigning it to our use tabs hook and we are going to take a look at that right now. So let's go inside use tabs. So our use tabs is a custom hook that we are using to manage the state of our animated tab. As you can see, it's expecting an input of an array of tabs, which we saw in the previous file right here. This is our array and we are providing it and it's also requiring our initial tab, which tab do we want to start to when we when we go to that page and on change what we want it to do when the tab is changed. And this is the rest of the code for that. So once we've done that, assigned it there, then we are going to go ahead and put it inside our div. So you see we got framer tabs right here and that is coming from our lib framer right here that we are exporting. So at the top we are importing a couple items. So one of them is the tab from use tabs hook that we were just looking at before, class names that we installed earlier, as well as a couple items from framer motion that gives us this nice animation. Now we have this transition constant that we initialized here to show like what kind of transition that we want. We have a couple props that we are passing into our tab and then now we have our tabs constant right here and then a couple items that we are initializing. Some of them are references, some of them are selects if we have a certain item that is selected or an index and I think you can really understand it better when we look at the actual return item. Now there's a little bit going on here and how I broken it down is if we close this up, we have a navigation tag. In our navigation tag, there are items that we have that are showing up here. Now it makes sense that we're using navigation tag is because we're navigating between different elements here. If we open this up, Inside our navigation, we have a reference as well as a event handler. So on pointer leave. So that is when we are hovering over an item and we leave our navigation, then that item is no longer shown that it's being hovered over. And inside our nav, we have a couple items. So if we also close them, one, two, three. So these are the three main items inside our nav. 
So for this item right here, we have our buttons. You can see that we are mapping through our tabs array. We're checking if that specific tab is active and it's either active if it's being hovered over or selected. So you see as I'm hovering over it, the text has changed color and we have a rectangle around that tab title. So this is where the colors are being shown. If it isn't active, it has a white divided by 60, which is more of a grayer color. And if it is, it has more of a brighter white color. And then at the top, we got the rest of our styling, which is all Tailwind CSS. It's the padding, the hover, the margin, all of that. So if you want to change any of that, you could do that there. And we're using class names to concatenate all the text. So it could be just one class. Next, we have a reference and then a couple other event handlers. Depending on the event, we want a specific action to occur. So that's what those are doing. Next, we have this, our animate presence, which is animating this action right here of the square. And it looks like it's smoothly transitioning in between the titles. And then lastly, we got our underline right here. As you can see, it's absolute on the bottom. We can increase the height if we want to. It looks like that. You can see it got a little bit bigger. If I want to make a bigger difference, you could do something like 10. You can see that's getting thicker, but I'm going to leave it back at three, just like that. And if you want to change the color, you would also do it over there. And then also here is how the animation's being done. And as you can see, we are also using the transitions from the top here as well. And then that's the gist of this file right here. So we could go back to our tabs and then that is our final item that we're importing here. And then just to make it nicer, I'm wrapping it around a div, giving it a border on the bottom. You can see if I remove this, then that border is going to be removed, but I want it there, so we do that. So like I said, this is handling the tabs. If we want to show the content within the tabs, we are using our framer object that we initialized here and we're doing dot selected tab and the children of that tab. So that's how it's recognizing what children are inside that tab. And that's why it's changing when we click on the specific tab. And yeah, that's how you create the Vercel animated tabs. Thanks for watching. That's it for this video. Everything that I talked about is going to be in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section or join our discord community. And yeah, thank you. Bye.